Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be making a pocket. It's going to be using a Tim Holtz die, this particular die right here. And I thought you might want to come along and make it with me. So this is a Tim Holtz die. This is what it looks like. And this is what the package looks like. He has a variety of them, but this is a fun one. You might even have the stencil. There's a stencil that goes with this as well. Looks just like that. It's pretty, pretty, pretty. But, but what I'm going to be doing right now is using this. So, and I'm going to be using it with a book page. This is just an old book, like from the 1930s or 1940s, something like that. And I'm going to try to find a page that has a full block of text that I can be cutting from. I'm going to take my die and position it. And I think I'm going to position it on this side. And I wanted a few lines up from the actual text block because I'm going to be cutting down from the bottom. I'm going to put it right here. Well, right there's good. About right there. And as you can see, I have tape on there. This is a tape that I've had for a long time. You can tell by how grungy it is. This is a tape. It's a paper tape. And it's actually a medical, medical paper tape. It's called Micropore. You can also use washi tape that works great as well but something to kind of hold this in place because when you run it through your machine if not it's going to go cattywumped and you're going to be having a weird cut so go ahead and put it like that and then run it through your Sizzix machine with the cutting parts facing up so i'm going to run mine through my machine right now okay here we are when i do it through my machine i run it through twice because of these are such small little spots in there, I want to make sure it, it gets a, a good cut. Sometimes it doesn't cut completely through, and it's just it's just a mess, and I have to do it again. So I'll run it through a few times. This is an awesome tool. It's called a tool-in-one. Um, with this little brush on the end, you can rub it over your die, and it causes all those little pieces to pop out. So not all of them out, but at, when I do this, more of them will end up coming out. Awesome, isn't it? So now I can look at this and see what's left. And then take this other end of my little contraption there and poke out any leftover pieces. So it actually got it pretty darn good. Just a few little tiny pieces. Boy, you have to really look because these are just tiny pieces. It's just such an excellent, excellent die. So I like putting mine away right away in my packet because I would lose it so easily. Okay, now that I have that cut out like that, what I wanna do is cut my pages. I'm gonna cut right along that side edge. And then I'm gonna cut along the bottom there. I'm gonna cut over here, you might not see. cut along the top and I like cutting kind of in between a sentence if I can like in the middle of a sentence so then your eyes not drawn to try to read a sentence if it's there at the very very top and I'm going to cut right along the edge if I had a text that had a wider text range in it I would cut it wider if I wanted to but this one I, I, I'm I'm dictated by the size of my text unless I wanted to have a white spot and that's fine too I just didn't want that now that I have that, I want to grab my pad because I want to do some distressing. My little thing there. So I'm going to use my Distress Ink. And this is my brush. It's just from the dollar store. You get it in the makeup section. I got mine at Dollar Tree. And it's a little more gentle. So I'm going to use that in here to just give a little bit more textured look and then I'm going to grab the, the standard Tim Holtz one and do it along this edge. I don't want to do the whole thing because I want to have some whiter areas just to create a little bit of uh, a little more interest in the page. So that's what that looks like. So now that I have that done I want to work on cutting out the base and I can measure it or I can kind of eyeball it like this. I'm going to hold this up and for me I'm going to eyeball it and I'm just going to go right there about a quarter inch past on each side. Maybe I'll do the top a little longer, I don't know. 
something like that. Easy peasy, right? Now that I have that, when I use this, there's a couple different ways I can use it. I can use it in gluing this down like a pocket like that and it'll go at the top. I can make an L cut or an L glue it down like this and then have this side pocket open. So if I wanted to, I could actually take this and cut out the side like that so it has a rounded corner. So there you go, like that. So just keep in mind that's something that you can do. But for now, I'm going to cut it like this. So the next thing I want to do is glue it down. So I'm going to use my Art Glitter Glue because it, it just has a nice tip. I'm telling you, I'm absolutely loving this glue though. I typically, and I actually have talked about it in the past, I've loved the Scotch Glue. I was a mini bookmaker before I made these and I use that glue all the time. It was like the best. But I'm a heavy glue person and I don't need they're usually with uh, the junk journaling, I'm, I'm not doing the same kind of gluing that I, you do in a mini book. And so this one works much better. So I've got that. So now I want to kind of find my little center spot and place it down. Now that I've got that, I would like to also have my edges distressed of a distress. Okay, now that I have that like that, I want to also put a little bit of lace. So this is actually a lace tablecloth, not tablecloth, but a lace curtain that I got at the thrift store. Just a really basic, inexpensive curtain. So you can get a much prettier lace, quite frankly, with teeny tiny, beautiful edges to cut into. But for my purposes for this, all I wanna do is just create the effect an impact that there's a little bit of lace there. I want to cut, I want to, I want it to break the line of my book page. And then what I'm going to do, here's my little button box. Oh, perfect. Then I also want to put a button there. So it's going to look like that. So for that, you can use hot glue or you can use the three in one, the beacon three in one. I'm going to use this beacon right now. Beacon holds down fabric really well. The, the chemical smell is awful though. And so I like using my glue gun instead and save my brain cells. Okay. So there is that. All right, so here's another way I wanna share with you. This is cheesecloth. And by adding just a little bit of cheesecloth, it really makes a nice, a nice difference on your piece. So just put some little teeny tiny pieces behind each of your corners. Nothing extravagant, but just something peeking out. Add a little glue. When it's this small like that and this airy, I, I find my regular glue works just fine. Some people might use that for fabric anyway. I don't, I don't know, I don't use it for that. But I'm sure it's awesome. So this one I had to cut really close because it was so close to the bottom of the page with the wording. So it's a little bit harder for me to glue my piece down there. So I don't necessarily want it poking through um, to where the to where the flowers are. So as I do this also, I'm not worrying too much about how much it hangs over because I'm going to go back and I'm going to cut and trim it. So I'm telling you, I love using cheesecloth. Just a little bit makes such a nice nice difference. Okay, so there's my areas. So I'm going to go back, kind of cut away spots where it's peeking through my flower area. So I have everything out of my flower area and now I'm going to go back and just give a little trim 
and then a little tug so it doesn't look too um, I don't want to look too perfect okay so now I've got those edges going on so I've got it inked I've got that done and then now what I'm gonna do is glue my piece on just an incredible die really okay get that on and then I'm going to grab a little piece of my lace again and the button so that's the difference between these two see how it just adds a little bit more movement for the eye I could have actually put a little on these edges too compared to um, just plain both are fine here's one more that I did so this one I actually framed it in on the back side up to the top line and I added a little bit lace at the top and then I had to put a little pink scrap behind it too so it added just a little bit more interest I really like it but I didn't add the um, cheesecloth on that one okay here's another idea and another way that you can take it sometimes when you use a text you know page from a book it's gonna have words on it that you're actually you probably maybe don't want it so what you can do you can take acrylic paint this is just a cheap acrylic paint I got from the dollar store but you can use anything here's like these little now it's a Mod Podge but these little bottles like that right you can get them anywhere you can get them at Walmart you can get them at um, Michaels you can get them anywhere so take it I just use my finger you can use a paintbrush I just use my finger because it's easy and I can wash up my finger so I'm going to take my paint kind of blot it over and just kind of create a distressed look and then I'm gonna particularly go heavy if there's an area where there's some wording that I, I really don't want part of my book I don't want it to even have a chance of being seen so I'm gonna go distressed like this and then I'm gonna let it go ahead and dry and then we'll go to the next part okay so that's where that what that looks like and now that text that I didn't want seen is no longer visible so I can take the same um, paper like this and I'm going to get a look but if I want something different something softer I can take a different color like this pink just has a, a prettier feel to it so let's let's see what that one's going to go ahead and look like I'm going to cut this one up and actually too you can make this a pocket with a flap so let me kind of eyeball that and then say I want the flap to go there and I fold that I'm going to put this on and I wonder what it would look like if we kind of did a little bit of just distressing in the background so let's with the pink you don't want to muddy it up too much in my opinion and have it look dirty so you have to be careful that you don't get too heavy-handed with your distress ink so by doing the I don't know if this picking up at all but by doing the distressing behind it it kind of creates a little bit more movement in the, with within the flower area especially since I have it distressed with the white paint on it okay so what I would do at this point I'm going to cut off the excess lip there glue this on mm. actually now I want to put a little bit of the things that bring personality into it and, and movement for the eye things for the eye to see especially on the white I'm just going to stop there so I'm going to go ahead and glue this down and 
and I'm going to put it up just a little bit higher than normal on the bottom. So if you can see that bottom lip is a little bit higher. And the reason is I want to create a little, a little tuck for my thing to go into. Now I'm not going to glue it in this book, but I'm going to just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So I would glue this down just like this one, right? Glue it down. I can put the other things there too. But what I want, I want to create a little, um, and I can use a half circle, I want to create a little something that's going to hold it, the book closed. So you can cut it yourself or you can make something like this. By putting that there, okay. Let's see. By putting that there, I'm going to be able to tuck this in and out. I'm just going to go like that. Okay. So by having that there and gluing that in, I can have a pocket here, but I can also have this open up so I have a space there for writing. Does that make sense? Isn't that cool? So let me pull that off. There's another idea. And then one other thing that you can do, you can take your tag like this and stamp along the edges. So here's a tag that's all ready to go for me to show you how to stamp on it. Go ahead and grab a word stamp. This is one that I picked up, I think, at Hobby Lobby some time ago. This is what the stamp is called. And so how I do it, I take my stamp and I turn it on the back like that. I ink it up and then I take this and I'm very careful. I want to I want to stamp at this top area. So I'm just going to push down on that top area, careful not to go too far be beyond. Then I'm going to rotate it and I want the letters to be a little bit more curved and I'm just going to keep on hitting different areas of the stamp so it'll pick up ink. And there you go. So now the last thing I want to show you is how you can sew along the edges also. So I've shown you a variety of ways that you can use this die and you can make pockets from it. There are more ways for sure. No matter what, I hope you have fun. I hope I gave you some ideas and I hope you have a fabulous day. Talk to you later. Bye.